Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, the Super Bowl is over, and it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top-rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Quincy Poot, who says the uh, Royal Netherlands Army Commandos. Primary is the M416, attachments is the PKAS hollow, should represent the compact M4 red dot sight, the vertical grip or folding grip, magnifier and standard suppressor, camouflages spray woodland. For the sidearm we'll be using the Glock G18, camouflat urban tools as the med kit and defibrillator, pretty standard medic loadout. Knife is the seal, grenade M67, specialization offensive for that extra speed, soldier camouflages ERDL on US, splinter on Russia. Try to use the magnifier as much as possible because the Dutch commandos don't have a flip to the side sight like Battlefield. This kit is based on stealth and silent takedowns. Try to flank around the enemy and take them down from behind. I recommend to play with this kit on conquest or large woodland areas like Caspian border. Stay commando and good luck. Now I'm not really sure what kind of magnifier optics commandos would have that don't flip to the side. In fact, I'm not even sure if any exist. And something tells me that if they can afford the HK416, one of the more pricey assault rifles in the world, then they can certainly afford a relatively inexpensive flip-up sight. That being said, I did try and use the flip-up sight a little bit. The two times magnifier I feel is relatively worthless with this weapon just because the recoil gets too intense for the most part. I won't say too intense, but it's just not really that worth it for tracking targets. The bullets move slowly. This weapon is really mostly going to be effective at uh, close quarters and at further ranges. I found it just kind of gave me tunnel vision a little too much and got me killed more often than uh, I was hoping to. So uh, for the most part, I used it without the flip up sight activated, but you will see some gameplay with me using it. It's been a while since I've actually used the PKAS hollow sight and it's not bad for the most part. I know we've done this sort of analytical videos talking about what optics are the best and the minimal housing and all that stuff, which is important for video games, not as much in real life. Uh, and the PKAS certainly didn't win any awards, but it's still a very, very usable sight. And I think it looks kind of cool. Chances are you would never actually see this Russian made optic on an HK416 in real life. Maybe somewhere someone has this set up, but I highly doubt it. And as was mentioned, this is actually taking the place of the Aimpoint Comp M4, which is a very cool and highly popular military optic. The US Army uses it extensively. A lot of other militaries around the world use that optic. And if you want to know what that optic looks like, um, it's one of the premier optics used in the game Squad, which does a pretty good job of rendering it now. Now, as many of you may know, the M416 is one of, if not my favorite assault rifle in Battlefield 4. I just think it's incredibly accurate, fast reload, good damage per second. It's just got so much stuff going for it. And when you attach a suppressor and a vertical grip to this weapon, it does two things. One, the suppressor keeps you off the minimap and it lowers your muzzle velocity incredibly. It also makes your gun sound quieter too, which I have to say probably in Battlefield doesn't make that big of a difference in general just because there's so many noises all the time. The actual sound of your firearm isn't as important, especially when playing clustered game modes, but staying off that minimap is incredibly important. So it's interesting and it's very good for team deathmatch oriented game modes where you can lone wolf it a little bit more. The suppressor is far less useful when playing with a squad and close by to teammates that are not using suppressed weapons. If you can get your whole squad to use suppressed weapons, then that's pretty cool and that's kind of badass too. Now, because of the incredibly slow muzzle velocity with the suppressor, you're not really going to want to use this as much for extremely long range engagements. I mean, you can still do it with stationary targets if you compensate for bullet drop. It's just overall not going to be that effective, especially if your target is running. So if you know you're going to be primarily engaging long range targets, then maybe take the suppressor off of this weapon. If you're playing TDM, more chaotic suppressor is probably going to be ideal because you are going to be engaging at medium to close range. Now the vertical grip is an excellent attachment all around. It does have some pros and it does have some cons. You got to be aware of them to know if it's the right attachment for you. Now the pro of the vertical grip is that it reduces your bullet spread while you're moving around, both from aiming down sight and hip firing. So if you're the kind of person who likes to try and dance around, move back and forth, 
mid firefight or you need to move and shoot a little bit if it's just not your style to stand still while shooting then this is going to be a very big benefit for you and sometimes players move around and they're not even really conscious of it or you think you stand still when you're shooting but you're actually kind of dancing around a little bit just subconsciously you're not really aware of it and you think you're like a standstill shooter type player well I'd say pay attention to your actual gameplay and and recognize what kind of player you are and if you do see yourself moving a lot and you don't want to correct that behavior then you might want to think about putting a vertical grip on your guns. Now the downside to the vertical grip is that it hurts your weapon spread over time if that makes sense. So basically when you're done shooting from a burst of a weapon your weapon returns to its normal state so your next burst will start off very accurate again. If you do a lot of full auto firing and then just give your weapon like a millisecond to breathe and then keep firing you're not going to have incredibly accurate shots uh, the second you start firing again so if you're a tap firing player which means sort of doing lots of small bursts or just a few single shots over and over again uh, a vertical grip is not going to help you it's going to take longer for your weapon to return to its normal perfectly accurate state so that is something to keep in mind and it is absolutely the worst attachment for somebody who likes to do lots of small controlled bursts and I guess I shouldn't really say the worst attachment out there it's certainly not going to ruin your weapon completely but it's something Thing just to be aware of if uh, you like that burst fire gameplay style you might not really understand why you're less effective with some guns than other guns well you might want to pay attention to your attachments a little bit more and understand that the vertical grip will affect that type of burst fire gameplay now going slightly off topic here, they have announced that in Battlefield Hardline they're actually going to change the PC damage model to better reflect the Battlefield 4 damage model. Uh, a complaint of some Battlefield players out there is that the time to kill in Hardline is a little bit too fast on PC and you kind of die before you realize what's going on. And the PC version of Hardline versus Battlefield 4 is basically about one extra shot to kill. That's pretty much what it comes down to. It's not that as a universal rule, but for the most part, Hardline has a pretty uh, ruthless time to kill. I don't mind it as much, but depending on the clustering or the um, density of any given game mode, having a very fast time to kill can be a little bit rough for some people to get their heads around. Whether or not this will revive the PC Hardline gaming community is another thing. I mean, I don't mean to be a pessimist, but I just don't see anything at this point really being bringing the PC Hardline community back. Now back to this actual loadout. I have to say it's pretty effective overall just not with the flip up sight on there. Um, again I'm not a huge fan of flip up sights in Battlefield. I don't think they're rendered particularly well and because you can put them on any gun it doesn't necessarily keep you from putting them on guns that they just won't be effective on. It's actually kind of amazing how much better I was playing with this loadout when I wasn't using the flip up sight versus using the flip up sight. And it might be different for you depending on your actual play style but but I definitely like to be a bit more aggressive, especially when I have a weapon that's set up like this with a, su a suppressor and a vertical grip. It inspires me to get in up close and personal and make use of that suppressor on TDM game modes. Anyway, that wraps it up for this episode of Loadout. Don't forget to leave your comments for next week's episode. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.